Hopefully we're on now. You're going to find today strong acid, strong base titrations are super easy. They can be tedious. You wind up doing the same thing many, many times. We'll split the work up this hour. We're going to go through one titration curve of a strong acid, strong base. After that, we get into a weak acid with a strong base. Uh, those problems and, and uh, those titrations are much more tedious. So when you ever see a problem in which there's a strong acid and a strong base reacting, you should say, huh, okay, this one is easy. There's hardly any work involved with those. Yes, right? Because there's only one X table for this one and two X table for the other one. Like right, that's right. Yes, yes. Yep. This would be a type of problem that uh, you would do that's not a titration curve where you have several points, it's just a standalone problem. Um, let's go through this together. I think you'll find this to be pretty easy. I hope you do. So get the pH. Just about every problem in this chapter, give the pH after something is done. So um, we've got a mixture of 50 ml of 0.1 molar HCl. Notice this thing right here. <coughs> this one is like two vicious dogs attacking each other. You've got the big nasty hydrogen ion from a strong acid, you've got the big nasty hydroxide ion from a strong base. So those two are going to go at it. Uh, whenever you know that uh, a reaction goes to completion, and with the strongs, even if there's one strong involved, it always goes to completion. You might want to remember that. When there's even one strong thing, a hydrogen ion or a hydroxide ion, it always goes to completion until the limiting reagent runs out. So you'll always write the strong reactions like this. Again, hear me right. I'm not saying a strong and a strong. I'm saying if even one of these are strong, it's going to go all the way. This just happens that both of them are strong. Yeah. Oh, wait. I'm sorry. No moles on plastic. A millimole would be a part of the solution, never part of the problem. I'm never going to give you millimoles okay. because they annoy me. Okay. Um, it, it's, there's not some, some mandate that says I can't give you. I just don't like them. Um, when you look at the solution guide and in, during the problem it's giving you millimoles rather than 0 .00 something moles, um, you'll get used to it. But I'm never looking for millimoles. I don't care about them. Is it possible to be on the AP exam? Yeah, maybe. Maybe the problem will say you have so many millimoles of hydroxide or whatever. You'll just have to know that that's what that means. Yeah? Why do you do it like now? Because we've been using like small numbers of moles for molarity for a while. You're right about that, and I don't know why now. Yeah. So when you see uh, that you have a strong thing reacting, a strong acid or a strong base, then you know the reaction is going to go one way. It's not an equilibrium reaction. And so make your ice table with moles. And I normally, when I have a single direction reaction, I don't put this stuff. I'll just say, okay, I have how many moles of hydrogen ion? There's 0 0.005 moles of that. <laughs> and 0 0.0075 moles of that. And it should, these always are reacting in a one-to-one -one ratio. So which one is limiting is not difficult to see. That one goes to zero. And this one goes down by the amount that that goes down, right? So 0 0.0025. 2.5 millivolts for Anthony. So what's the pH? Looks like we have an excess of hydroxide, so the pH is going to be above 7. And let's calculate it. Concentration of hydroxide is 0 0.0025 moles. Over the total volume, make sure that you add the volumes together, we have 50 ml and 150 ml. So it's point, ah, point, ah, point 0.2 liters. So we get the molarity, take the negative log of it, that's the pOH, and then subtract 14 gives us the pH. I'm trying to remember from last hour, and I can't. 
That's not very hard. I hope that you find that to be pretty elementary compared to some of the things we do in here, especially after doing all that equilibrium work. That's not a big deal. So strong, strong problems are super easy, like that, and uh, you should be happy when you get them. Anybody need any more time or have any questions about this one? You don't have to study the bio anymore. You almost whacked your head. That was close. <laughs> All right. So what we do a titration curve, what we do is uh, we will have a measured amount of an acid or base in a beaker. And there's a pH meter probe that's sitting there in the beaker that's going to read the pH for us. And then we'll have something in the burette. The burette material is called the titrant. The titrant. It's what we're using to titrate that stuff that's in the beaker. So your graph, and you will make a graph, you'll make lots of graphs in this chapter, you're always going to make it like that. The pH is always the dependent variable, so it's on the y. And then the volume, the titrant can vary. Sometimes you're going to have a strong acid in that, uh, um, uh, in the burette. Sometimes it will be a strong base in the burette. So uh, that, that stuff is in the burette is the titrant. Okay. So, uh, you'll have strong acid, strong base titrations. Those are really easy to do. But then you have a weak acid with a strong base, or a weak base with a strong acid. Those are more involved. Finding every pH at every data point. Um, I know there's one problem in the uh, homework, the lactic acid problem, I think it is. In that one problem, you have to find, gosh, eight or ten pHs, plot them. It's terrible. It's a terrible problem. It makes Mr. Hevel and I smile. <laughs> yes. Yes. Actually, I don't think it would be that bad. If you, if you use the stuff on the list. Because if you put a lot, like, a lot of it on the list, and then you write it into one function, like, you can basically just calculate the output for all of this. Yeah. yeah but that's what so that's you basically have to do one thing. You're going to see when we start titrating weak acids. Um, then I run the program. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, yes. We would. We would. Program. The made up program. What? The made up program. My friend. Yeah, we'll have to use it on for sale. For how much? I don't know right now. It's like 99 cents. Because I haven't added them. Yeah, we can just get it for free. But the thing is, like, one when you get to the buffer problems, you better kick it up to 9.99. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> it's worth it. That's, but it's not like any calculator. Uh, uh, you'd have to program it yourself. It's easy. Oh. Just go on YouTube. Yeah, what if I to <laughs> Drew just did it for me in like 30 seconds. Yeah. <laughs> so why is he coming? I know. That's why I don't. Now titration curves. This very topic is going to take us about a week and a half to get through. We're going to um, have a couple of days of lecture where we're going to go through, today it's going to be a strong acid, strong base titration. Tomorrow we're going to do a weak acid titrated with a strong base. We might be able to get both weak acid and weak base tomorrow in. Um, and then on Monday we'll continue, we'll talk about polyprotic, that's where you have the two uh, jumps in the graph. And then I, I believe on Tuesday we start the lab. And the lab, like I said, takes us like four or five school days. So we've got a long time now where we're going to be just working on titration curves. The due dates for the lab are over there where it says um, titration lab part one, Monday 2-6. That's the due date for part one. So we have that up there as well because this thing is going to be spread out. You're going to be working at different paces. Um, it's kind of nice. We'll, we'll take a break out and uh, there will be several days where there's nothing new. That, that's kind of cool. That doesn't happen in this class. Sorry, what is this, like two weeks? Yeah, it's, it's a long time from now. February 8th. Yeah. Okay. Normally with the book problems, the, the, the given problems, you're going to go usually every 10 milliliters of the titrant, and you'll find what the uh, pH is and plot the point. When we do the experiment in here, you'll do every 2 milliliters. And then you have a lot more data points. But the good thing is, you're just reading the pH and you're plotting it 
on the grid. You're really not calculating anything, which is really nice. And then I'll ask you questions about what you uh, what you got experimentally. But yeah, when we actually do the experiment, it's much less work than um, than when you have to calculate what the pH would be. Yeah. So how many data points will you actually get? In the lab, uh, in the twenties, twenty to thirty data points. Yeah. But you're having the computer graph it for you, so it, it's really nice. Okay, uh, so let's go on, and we'll begin our first titration curve. This is going to be a strong acid and a strong base. And by the way, before we do that, one other thing I was going to mention. Do you notice that a combination is missing? A weak acid with a weak base. We will not do any of those. Uh, and, and that's fortunate. Because those would be, I've never even had to do a weak acid, weak base. It's not even practical to do that. So um, as long as one of the things is strong, it makes it so it's not that bad. But if you had to ever calculate it, like mixing a weak base and a weak acid together, if I say, okay, you have 20 ml of HClO2, which is a weak acid, with um, 30 ml of this concentration of ammonia or whatever, and what is the pH? Just just go in and cry in the corner. It's not going to be a nice experience. Yeah. But how would you do it with each stop? Well, you'd have to know what the Ka of the acid is and the Kb of the base, yeah. whichever one dominates, and uh, have them react. Would they react to completion? I think so. They would react late, so then it's not bad. Treat it like this. Well, oh, I have to give you a problem. Let's see what you think. Well, then you just treat it like a weak strong, right? No, it's not a weak strong. But like, if they, if it went to completion, it would basically be a weak strong. I don't know if it does go to completion. Oh. Wait, if it went to completion, then that would be a little bit Yeah. Yeah. But doesn't like Lee Shot. We're not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is what we're going to spend the next uh, few minutes on is titrating. So, we're going to have a beaker that has 0.2 molar hydrochloric acid and 30 milliliters, and it has been measured out. So, that's what's in the beaker. Then, in the burette above it, there's going to be a solution of 0.1 molar NaOH. And so we'll measure the pH every 10 ml of sodium hydroxide that gets in. How many are we doing? Sorry, I know how many types of milliliters. We're going to go from 0 milliliters of NaOH up to 100, but we're going to skip a few at the end. So I think we have eight data points, seven or eight. So a titration curve is always going to have the initial pH before any of the titrate gets added to it. What's the pH of your initial solution? So that's what we would do at number one. That means we just have a beaker that's got 0.2 molar HDL in it. What's its pH? Well, since it's a strong acid, it's very easy because the hydrogen ion concentration that we would find the pH from is equal to the HDL concentration, which is 0.2. So you just take negative log of 0.2, and we would have our first pH. It's going to be 0.7. We good with that? That's super easy. The next thing that we would do now is we would get to the point, okay, we're now adding 10 milliliters of the titrate. So a reaction is going to occur inside the beaker. Then we'll get the pH of the final solution. So this is the reaction that occurs. Uh, there's going to be a neutralization where the hydroxide that's added to the H plus uh, will neutralize. Just like we did in the reading quiz, we'll have to figure out how many moles of that and moles of that. And that would be 0 0.006 moles of H+. Plus. And then how much hydroxide got added to it? 10 ml of 0.1 molar is going to be 0 0.001 moles of hydroxide. Yeah? Yeah. So it goes to completion because there's a strong present. Therefore, that is 0. And that goes down by that amount, which is down to 0 0.005 moles. So we need the pH of this solution. We still have an excess of hydrogen. It's going to be below 7. 
and uh, we'll need to find the hydrogen concentration first. So take 0 0.005, divide by the total volume. So like this, H plus is 0 0.005 moles of H plus, that hasn't reacted yet, divided by the total volume, 30 ml plus 10 ml, 0 0.04 liters. Get that concentration, take the negative log of it for the pH, what do you get? 0.9, I think, if I remember yeah. right. 0.9. Yes? Wait, I figured it out. 0.9. Like alternate the really <laughs> Wait, but like, you have to absolute absolute value, and you have to remember to subtract some of the proportions if it's annoying. Yes, you'd need the absolute value. Oh, right. absolute value. The strong, strong would be easy. So what we would do, we would start constructing a graph. The zero, the y-intercept, would be 0.7. That was what the pH is at zero uh, milliliters added. Then we'd go over 10 milliliters and up to 0.9. So you, we started with 0.7 and went up to 0.9, so it's just creeping up a little bit here at the beginning. We go on now to the next data point, where 20 milliliters have been added. And so this will bring up a question. Do you start this data point from the end of this one? Or do you start it from the beginning? The answer is, for all these data points, start from the beginning. So we're going to go back to, and that's what I'm saying here, use the original concentration. At the beginning, we had 0 0.006 moles of H+. Break that down. And then how many total moles now have been added of OH? Yeah. How come it goes like 1, 1.2, 1.4, 1.5, and then 7, and then 2, like 12, and then like Yeah, that's why when you have you have that drastic pH change. Oh, so um, does that not happen with buffers? Correct, it doesn't. You're going to get a, a, a vertical region, but it's not going to be as drastic as the strong strong. Okay, so it's 0 0.006 moles. We had originally at that. The total amount of hydroxide this man added now is 20 ml of 0 0.1, which is... 0 0.002 moles. What's the pH? So, uh, same thing happens. This is a one-way reaction, so we look at the limiting reagent. That goes to zero. That goes to 0 0.004. Find the concentration of hydrogen by dividing by the total volume and the pH. And what do you get? 1.09. Okay, so the pH continues to just just uh, gently go up as the hydrogen is kind of getting depleted. The pH is getting closer to neutral. Do so you see what we do? I'm going to have you uh, in your rows. Uh, try a few other data points. I'm going to ask Jennifer in her row, would you calculate the pH when 30 milliliters of sodium hydroxide were added? And Arpitha, in your row, would you guys do 40 milliliters of NaOH added? Karthik and, and Mark, would you guys do 50 ml added? Matthew, in your row, would you do 60 Why ml added? The easy what? Stop complaining. They got the easy one. Uh, Freddie, in your row, would you guys do 70 milliliters of any way yet? That's even easier. And then the most important group over there, uh, would you do 100 ml? What if you already did all of them? Well, let Antonio work it out and see if you guys get the same thing. <laughs> what? Are you at 60? Wait, one number? How much are we on? You're right here. Oh, no, right there. 70 milliliters of any way to it. I'm just going to give us the pH rate. Yeah. Oh, like, right where it is. Oh, yeah. That's good. Yeah. Make sure you can do your data point, because if you can do yours, you can do it. I got one point one. Yeah. I haven't even finished writing down the song. Give me, like, two seconds. I'll do this so the people at home can appreciate 
the students working hard on the, here we go, there, there's a hard worker right there. No, this is Oh, crazy man in the back. <laughs> oh, now there, right there is a hard working kid. Look at this guy. This is what, oh, this is what we're hoping everybody does. But unfortunately, we only have one in the class. Oh, ah, gosh. Oh. <laughs> Group to make sure that you all give me the same pH. Yeah. Got the same? if all of you in the same row agree that it's right. Karthik Park, what do you have for your data point? So, we're now right up at the edge of the equivalence point. Still very acidic. 1.9 is still a very acidic solution, even though it's close to the equivalence point. Then we get to point number 7, and you get a pH of 7. So it has jumped from 1.9 up to 7, Because this is the point at which all the moles of hydro hydrogen ion have been um, have, are equal to the number of moles of hydroxide ion, and they, they cancel out. Then we're past the equivalence point now, and now we've added more sodium hydroxide than there was hydrogen at the beginning. And what do you get for pH? 12. Point what? 12. 12.12? No, 12. 0. <laughs> so between the last three data points, we had 1.9 and then went up to 7, and now it's way up to 12. You get that huge swing in a real hurry when you do a strong, strong titration. That swing is not as drastic when it's a weak with a strong, and we're going to see that in the next couple of days. Okay, then finally, you guys over there, uh, what did you get when you added 100 ml? 0.49. So we see that it jumped to 12, and then it's kind of leveling off, and it is it did go up a little bit more because there, well, we went from 7 at 70 milliliters of sodium hydroxide to 100 milliliters of it. Um, that was quite a bit more hydroxide, and so it will continue to go up a little tiny bit after that, but not much. It's pretty well flat. Like if you added 200 ml now of NaOH, it might it'll be a little bit more than 12.49, not much. All right. So, when we have a strong acid being titrated with a strong base, the, gir the, the graph or the curve always looks like this. Now, this is not the exact same graph because you can see this is 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide added to 50 ml of that. We didn't use the same uh, HCl solution as what we started with. We started with a more concentrated HCl, so it was down below 1 at the beginning. But I want you to notice that the equivalence point for a strong acid, strong base saturation is 7, and it always is. That's not true when you have a weak acid or a weak base being titrated. Yes? Why does the graph not look like it's flattening out, but it's like going like down more? Where? Like at the bottom. Down here? Yeah. That's what it did. We started with a certain pH and it just crept up a little but bit. Like it looks like it's concave down for that certain first, like 30, 30 slightly. Yeah. Concave it's down. It's not like that thing. That's just my own solution. That graphic's fine. It seems like it's okay. Okay. 
I don't know, it, it's just uh, maybe an oh, experimental error or something. <laughs> we can always use that. What you work with, Justin? Yeah, that, that would be a huge source of error. I would like, in the last 15 minutes, to begin the next titration, which would be a weak acid being titrated with a strong base. You're going to get kind of the feel for what those data points look like. Tomorrow when we get here, we'll just zip through the, uh, the rest of the graph. Actually, we won't zip through it because there's, there's more detail to worry about when you have a weak acid or weak base than when they're strong, strong. So, let's go ahead and be, we're going to do just one side with two data points on it and we quit. Our acid that's going to be in the beaker at the beginning is going to be hypochlorous acid, HOCl. It's a very weak acid, as you see from its Ka value. So we'll use a strong base to titrate it. So our first data point is always going to be the initial pH before any of the titrant has been added. So that means that we're going to have that HOCl sitting in a beaker and measure its pH. How are you going to do that? Yeah, it's just a normal. This would be a chapter 14 problem. Here's a concentration of a weak acid. Here's its Ka. What's its pH? As you go through this chapter and you reflect back on chapter 14, you realize, whoa, chapter 14 was very elementary. Not that it was easy, because it wasn't easy, uh, but what we did in chapter 14 was just a part of what we have to do every problem in this chapter. So yeah, this is what the, uh, uh, the ice table is going to look like. Now, if you remember the first day of this chapter, uh, I talked about a shortcut where the hydrogen concentration can be calculated pretty quickly and easily just by doing this. Remember this? Yeah, I don't know how to do this either. We did it. Really, that's what we do uh, every time when we have a... Uh, um, oh, yeah, I remember that. We did it. We talked about it. Yeah, all, all we acid. Acid. Yes. Even for polyprotic acid, because you're just using the first Ka, you just use Ka1 for it. Yeah. Yeah. If you trust yourself to remember that and not get it wrong, it's not really that bad. I don't trust my memory, though. I would do the ice table. And what do you get for a pH of this solution? Remember, our first data point for the same concentration of HCl was 0.7. Very low pH. What's the uh, pH of this one? 4.23. 4.23. Pretty weak acid, isn't it? We eat foods that are lower than 4.23 pH. Like what? Um, spicy foods have below, and I think even pop is below four. Like what? Uh, what below four. Acid? Yeah. Uh -huh. And carbonic acid, I think, is Ka is 10 and 8 to 7. Oh. Yep. Wait, but if you wait and let it like sit and bubble out, it's not going to. Right, the pH yeah. changes. Wow. Yeah, by quite a bit. Does it go back to it does. Eventually. But sugar has to be. I don't think sugar affects the pH. Okay. You might have other things in it, like other salts that would affect the pH. Not very much. Okay, I told you the last slide. This is the last slide because we have the first data point where we're adding some of the base to it. We're adding to the weak acid 0.1 molar uh, of sodium hydroxide. So we're adding a strong base to this weak acid. So do we have to stoic it? Yeah. We have to stoic it. That's right. That's right. So the first thing that happens is exactly right. It sounds kind of funny, but, but that's exactly what we do. 
We have a vicious dog attack. There's that hydroxide ion, and it's going to uh, uh, attack the acid that's that's uh, in there. Remember, there's no base, so we're not starting with any of this. This is not a buffer solution that we're we're starting with. So, yeah, the first thing that we'll do is the stoichiometry. When you see this arrow, you're using moles. Always use, don't use molarity, use moles. So we're going to have how many moles? 0 0.004 moles of that. And then how much base has been added? 0 0.001. Now we had zero of this to start with. There actually was a little bit, but it's a negligible amount. Just the, the dissociation of HOCl produces some of that, but it's virtually zero compared to the amount that's about to be made, right? So these two react, this is our limiting reagent, so that goes to zero. This goes down by that amount. And this is gonna go from zero up by that amount. Like that. Oh, I did that wrong, didn't I? You see what I did? Should be, yeah, it went down by 0 .001, that's not what the final number of balls, 0 0.003. Once you have this, now what? Now we have to find the pH of this weak acid solution, and that means we go to, whoops, I'm going to erase this. Do I have the answer up here, kind of? Stand in front of it and erase. Wow. You didn't see that. Oh my God. 